Then we will be thinking of a small village that I am belongs to this village or that village or that city or that country, that uh, uh, town. Now take oh that away and forget who we really are. So, the Buddha's teachings begins from here. The question, who you are? Yeah? Who are you? So that's the entire Buddha's teachings is about knowing ourselves. Nothing, anything else. Just who you are. And here comes the meditation. Without the meditation, we will not be able to understand who we really are. So that's why the first thing is to know is who we really are. Now, the things that we can tell ourselves that I am, that we can see, is this body. Yeah? This entire body. It's called a ruga or a matter. And normally we think that this is my body. So we want to be always young, beautiful, you know, energetic, and strong. And that is our wish. We have no control over it. So day by day, we get old. And day by day, we try to be uh, slim and strong uh, and uh, handsome and beautiful. But it is not the case. The more you think about wanting to be slim and handsome, you will get more weight on. You become a, what is called, <laughs> now, I have been trying not to be fat. <laughs> I have reduced all the sugar and I do not eat after 12 until tomorrow morning. And yet, see, after COVID, how big I am. <laughs> So, it happens. And yesterday I saw a picture. Uh, after the event, I never realized that how fat I am. <laughs> I never felt that I am fat, but I am fat. <laughs> after seeing the picture. And then suddenly I also realized, is that me fat or the camera is something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this body is again it's made out of a four element. Whatever we eat, it simply changes the body. And wherever in whichever situation we are in, whichever environment we are in, that also affects our body. And that's how we change. That's why we get COVID, we get flu, we get sickness, because we are constantly changing with the effect of all other environments. Because in the environment, there is also four element. We feel hot because the heat element is strong and that heat affecting our body and that's why we feel hot. Same, we live in Scotland, quite often we feel cold because the heat, the temperature is down and with that affects to us. So in the buildings also, every year you have to repair because there is expansion and because the weather outside affecting inside. This body also like that too. And with that, the 
changes. And with that change, it decays. And that's why we get the wrinkles. Yeah? And that's how you become a multi million business to remove your wrinkles. <laughs> Plastic surgeries. Botox. Yeah? Uh, Botox uh. <laughs> So much. But doesn't matter how much you put uh, or inject, end of the day, there will be decay. Uh, there will be, end of the day, lots of uh, this uh, wrinkles around your face, and gradually your body begins to reject food. And certain foods you can't eat, and certain drinks you can't touch, so body decays. And this we cannot control. And normally, because of knowing, not knowing it, we become frustrated, we feel sad, we feel unhappy, because I don't want to be like that. I want to be able to fit as I was when I was young. This is not the case. And not able to accept that change that causes the suffering, the stress. Yeah? Causes the stress. And then there will be sleepless nights, and there will be a finding that this food I can't eat, that food I can't eat, and then trying to find organic foods. And whichever food is written organic, you will go first to that one. Doesn't matter whether that is organic or not. We have this temptation of anything that is reduced to times, or anything that is said organic, we will go first. Without investigating without thinking of whether it is true or not. That's simply because we want to fulfill, to make this body, our physical body, healthy back. We don't want to be get old. We don't want to get sick. And we don't want to die. So that's why we strive a lot to get things done and stay young and healthy ability to stay long. That's not the case. Okay? So, the practice of meditation helps us to recognize this change of our own physical body. And that is a knowing, the first knowing of ourselves, our body. Now, body is not ours, so we can't control. So, what about our mind? Yeah. Our mind, again, we cannot control. We can train it, but we can't control. Our mind, again, similar to the uh, body, which is a combination of the four elements, the earth, water, fire, and wind, but the mind has also four qualities. Ability to feel and uh, perceive or memory and perception and uh, there is an in uh, intention to do a will to do and then knowing. There's a four components there. And these four components are getting conditioned. In order to feel they should have something else, and the mind is present there. Only then we feel. If there is no body, and if there is no, uh, let's say, a temperature, we will not feel hot or cold. Huh? We will not feel it. Same, whenever things happen that we dislike, when we feel sad. Do you think the sad is just a feeling or emotion? 
where the sadness comes from, happiness, where the happiness comes from. We become sad when we didn't get what we want. When it doesn't happen as we wish, then we become sad. Like suppose you are fall in love with someone, you want them to be with you all the time. But they don't stay with you. Then, sadness. The moment when he comes or she comes, oh, over the moon, you're happy. So we are conditioning ourselves to our feelings and adding some more ingredients, and that's how we become sad for happiness. Alright? Yeah? Now, that's why uh, every emotion is our reaction to the feelings. Yeah? Every emotion is our reaction to feelings. And that feeling is already conditioned by so many other factors. So that's why practice helps us to understand that this is happening. That's why it's called Jitte Itta Matta, Sutte Sutta Matta, Mutte Sutta Matta. When you see, you just see. When you hear, you just hear. When you test, you just test. Yeah? Like that. The moment when we see and we define it, then what happens? First, we see that creates the Vedana. Yeah, feeling of seeing it and then as soon as we see it we recognize that this is I have been through I know this so the sanya comes perception perception about that particular object and after having that object perceiving it what we do like and dislike okay hold on or push it away reacting and with that reaction, creates emotion. And that's how we become unhappy. The practice is simply, aha, uh -huh, you come, that's good. That's it. Do not offer a tea. Uh, whenever somebody comes, you simply, like I normally give a simile of a <coughs> postman. When postie comes, you receive the letter, but you do not offer a tea. So you simply say, thank you, have a good day. You leave. Same with every emotion, every feeling, everything that comes to contact. If we can do that, no problem. Yeah? Because everything is just like a person. Postman comes, come to touch in our senses and it will go away. But the very moment when the posty man comes and oh he's very handsome. <laughs> That's why in the past they, they say when they were having fights they would say, Oh, that's not my baby, that's a posty. <laughs> causes a trouble. So, a practice of a meditation will help us to recognize that this is happening. Just it is. And with that, our mind is not tangled with the object that comes through our senses. And there will be no samhara. We are not creating furthermore. Yeah? When we are not creating furthermore, what happens? That we go empty and empty and empty. Empty from desires, places. <coughs> and that's how we will be able to know all the, um, it's called the sabhavas, phenomena, whatever arises, we will be able to recognize. And that is called knowing.
everything that's happening now is new. Everything is new all the time. Nothing is old. Everything is new. Even though you're going into the same room for many, many times, it's still new. That's why they are philosopher Descartes. He said you can't jump twice in the same river. Yeah? Can you jump twice in the same river? Because water is flowing all the time. So new things is happening all the time. And that's why anything that's happening now is always new. And this new things that's happening, which is happening now, we simply need to put only one word, one alphabet, K. What will it be after you put the K at the front? Hmm? No. No. Yeah? K N O W. N O W. Now, you just need to put K. What happened? You know now. When you know now, what you know, that becomes new. Yeah? And then put K at the front of the new. What happened? Mm. You knew. <laughs> yeah? You knew. And then when you attach to new, it then causes a problem. Yeah? I knew that. So you're holding on to your perception. So you're standing on that perception. You're not in now. You're not knowing what's happening in now. And that is the problem for you. So practice of the meditation is simply knowing this K at the front. Just bringing this K at the front. And that is a subject. So, and that sati in, mind, uh, in English is translated as mindfulness. So just being mindful of now, you are knowing here and now. And that brings happiness. And every time when you know now, you are always awake. Yeah? You are always awake. Your sleepy or your sati or your mindfulness is always awake, active. Your mindfulness is always there. Your mind is always in the now. And in the now, you know all the time what's happening. Not new. You know. Okay? You know. And this is sati or mindfulness becomes. Uh, enjoying in that being in now. And in this moment, what happens is that because you are knowing this now, in the moment, here and now, this mind always bringing the kusas downwards, not apusas. Because the moment when you bring apusas up, you will be attached to the new, to the past perceptions, experiences. Yeah? And that's how what happened? We were going back into the negative akusasas. But the character of the sati is kusasatita. It's called a uh, kusasatita or soma kusasatita yeah? This is always kusas. The moment when you are mindful, you will not be falling into the wrong path. Okay? You will not be falling into the wrong path. You are not doing anything bad. Your path is in the kusas. And every action, whether you are doing it physically, or whether you are speaking, or even thinking, that becomes a kusas, a wholesome. Okay? When that becomes a wholesome or kusas, what happens? Things that is unhelpful, unbeneficial, unskillful, we will avoid. Yeah? We will avoid as much as we can. 
and anything, any behaviors that we have which is harming ourselves, then we will get rid of. Try to remove from our behavior. And then anything that is not developed, that is skillful or beneficial, then we will put effort to develop that. And then we will maintain any good activities or behavior that we have been performing. We will maintain and develop furthermore. That's why it's called Bhavana Yeah. Uh, we are developing again and again. And with this mind, he will be able to enjoy all the time. Doesn't matter what happens. It's okay. You will be able to see, oh, I know. Oh, this comes. Oh, okay. Easy to let go. Easy to let go. Because we have seen the real things that this is always happening new. New things happening in now. And I, I know this is here. Knowing all the time. And it's always changing. Why worry? Yeah? Why worry? And with that, we will be able to let go all the time. It's like the toilet sin. <laughs> So some of you may not know my toilet simile. Huh? Do you know where is the toilet? Yeah? In, the, in the temple we know now where is the toilet. If you don't need the toilet, you will not think of the toilet. Will you? You will not think of the toilet. But the very moment when you need the toilet, you will be trying to find where is the toilet. <laughs> Searching for the toilet, you will forget everything. Doesn't matter how delicious food on the table. <laughs> Doesn't matter how important that person is. The first thing first, you will be thinking of toilet. Okay? So you will go to the toilet. And suppose someone in the toilet, then you have to wait outside the toilet. What will you be thinking? Huh? Terrible. What he's doing inside the toilet. It's not time to make up. <laughs> huh? Goes on so many things. And as soon as he or she comes out, it's like you're going into a heaven. Huh? You sit on the toilet, you release. <sighs> Isn't that wonderful? It's a heaven on earth. <laughs> yeah? You can't find a real happiness like that anywhere else in the world apart from the toilet. <laughs> yeah? And so it's just release. I'm happy. So in Thai language, that's why it's called sukha, which means happiness. Yeah? Toilet is sukha, means happiness. Place where we get happiness. And the word in English I also divide the place that I let go. So, do I let go? Do I let go? Toilet. Yeah? Do I let? It's a place to let go, not to keep. That's why don't forget to flush it away, otherwise it becomes stinky. Remember to flush it away. Yeah? The toilet always needs to flush it away. So let go. You will not be in the morning, oh, I have just released and oh, I should keep it. You will not do that. You will simply release and flush it away. And you will be happy. So the place to let go. And that's a physical letting go gives us that much happiness. Yeah? Physically releasing it gives so much happiness. Think about our mind. How much rubbish we accumulate every now and then, every day. I sees, 
hear, hear stories, yeah? and the smell, the tongue, the body comes to contact, and then thinking, a lot of rubbish we accumulate. So we don't have a physical toilet for the mind that we can take a uh, Okay, I need a toilet for my mind and go away. We don't have it. So I call it mindfulness meditation is invisible toilet that you are having with you all the time. All what you need is to be mindful that or remember that I have this toilet. I remember you just invisible toilet, just unlock, go and sit there. It's with you all the time. It's like a I saw a cartoon where a monk was walking uphill and he felt, he said that uh, nobody wants me because I'm getting old. I can't help any temple's work. Nobody wants me. Everybody's abandoned me now. So he's walking. And there is a shadow following him. And the shadow said, that's why I'm with you. Do you get? Monk is walking alone, thinking that nobody cares. Shadow is saying, I am with you. <laughs> <laughs> so like that, toilet is with you all the time. A toilet of the mind. All what you need is just, okay, I need it. The moment when you know that you need it, all what you need is just to take a long breath. Just bring your attention to your body and you will enjoy. You will enjoy wherever you are. Nothing can bother you anymore. Everything is just it is. Huh? I know that. It's okay. Right? You will be able to do that. Do you think that Do you think that people can annoy us, makes us angry? Who makes you angry? Yeah? Ourselves. Yes. That's why I always keep it in my mind. No one can make me angry without my permission. The moment when we become angry, that means we have given permission to that person. That person's action, that person's words. Yeah? And then who wins here? The person who has intention to make you angry, makes you upset, they will be laughing at your back. Ha <laughs> ha. I can make them uh, uh, angry, I can make them upset. But the moment if you say, I don't care, it's okay. So you're not giving permission to <coughs> words and behaviors, then what happens? That person will feel very annoyed. And they will try many different ways to make you angry. The more you resist, they become more annoyed. Okay? So, no one can make us angry. No one can make us upset. If we know what's happening now. And how do we know what's happening now? And that always happens because some form of the sensations starts to take place within ourselves, in our body, physical body. Particularly anger and upset, we can feel it in our body. Temperature heats up, breath changes, uh, okay? and then sometimes uh, you feel shake, sometimes some people feel sweaty, shivering, like that. So that very moment, if you can manage to be mindful of that, Changes. Ah, I know. My postman is here. 
Yeah, and that's simple. Welcome the cross man. Receive it. Thank you for giving this opportunity uh, to notice the sensation. Now you can go. So let it go. And that's how we will be able to enjoy entire life. Life becomes much, much happier. Yeah? That's why once we can do these three things, know, awake all the time, and enjoy life, you are the Buddha. That's a Buddha nature. So we are basically walking the path to be the Buddha. Enlightening ourselves. And that is the teachings of the Buddha. Yeah? And with that, what happens? Nothing can bother us. We are happy. And with this, our life becomes very, very happy life. Every moment becomes precious. And each moment becomes so important that we will live our life happily. And we will live our life happily and enjoying the life. Right? Enjoying every moment. And that enjoyment is not like a, you know, enjoying in the parties. You are enjoying with the kusala chittas. Wholesome. It's within. Within, yeah. yeah. So that's why there is a standard called Sati Sampatha uh, Patiya. Yeah? Sati Sampatha Patiya. That means this, the moment when we have this mindfulness, it always wishes to bring the Kusala Chittas at front. And when this Kusala Chittas comes at front, it always helps us to deal with all other problems. Well, sati comes from the root called running. Okay, the root, running. And then, that's not just the running, running towards the kusala. Yeah? It's like a, 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 a security guard. So he's always there, watching, and anything, he feels that something is wrong, straight away, he will not delay, he will run towards it, and watch what's happening. And then immediately, it will think of a solution for it. So that is the sati. Okay? That is the sati. And with that, we will be able to deal with any problem. And all the problems becomes no problem. Okay? In Thai language, there is a word called panha. Okay? Panha, which means trouble. And all what you need is at the end, the so called hoi, change it into yogi. Only one word. From panha, it becomes panya. Uh, when that is panha, it means more, so many troubles. But when you know exactly what that panha or the trouble is, wisdom arises. <laughs> and with that wisdom, you can solve that easily. So that's why all down to this sati, mindfulness. And the more we have this sati, the panya or the wisdom grow more. And our life becomes much happier. So with this reflection, um, I offer this as a, a food for the thoughts and also uh, give you some guidance as a practice at home and in, in your day-to-day -day life, an occasion of a Vesak celebration. And uh, thank you everyone for coming all day and observing the Sila and participating. And with this, may you all be well and happy. May the triple win bless you. Um, and then uh, may you have a Samaditi leading towards the uh, Maka, Pola and Nibbana.
เวลาหรือเปล่าสรุปว่าชาติที่อาดามาจะตัวคนสุดมาอาศัยเป็นชาติอีกนิ